In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can paint an Emperor's Children army for Horus Heresy. So to start with, I take a look at the colour plates from the black books, and this gives me a few guidelines of the areas that I really want to focus on. I'm going to be using an airbrush for this project, and that's because, firstly, we think using an airbrush when painting a Space Marine army is a no-brainer, but secondly, because that's what the Forge World painters did when they were creating those schemes in the first place. Over a black undercoat, I'm going to use Tamiya Flat White to begin my pre-shade or pre-highlight stage. I've thinned this heavily, probably three to four drops of thinner to paint. I'm slowly going to work my way around the model, creating a light source. A uniform light source across the back, and then a uniform light source from the front. We want the areas at the top of the model to be lighter if we assume that light source is coming from above. So take your time, build up the layers of opacity, and you'll get lots of nice grey scale just using the white over the black. I'm showing you it in real time here on the back, and then we're going to flip to fast when I do the front. But I thought there'd be some benefit in showing how to pre-shade the entire marine. So you can see here our light source is coming from the right hand side as we look at it, the left hand side of the marine. So just making sure all those areas of highlight match up. And this is going to give our colours that we lay over the top of it a lot more punch, but also immediately add in a little bit of shading. For the base colour, I've taken P3 Beaten Purple and I've added in a little drop of Scale 75 Ink Tense Violet, which is just a purple acrylic ink. This is to give the purple a little more richness to it. You can add as much or as little as you like. I think this was approximately five drops of Beaten Purple to one drop of ink. I've then thinned that mix just over 50-50 with normal airbrush thinner and I'm going to apply it in a couple of thin coats. I think in the end it was between three and four coats to get a smooth finish on the model. Again I'll show you it in real time on the back, and then when we flip to the front it will be sped up. If you want to understand about using inks to add a little bit more punch to your colours, take a look at our other video. And you can see just over a nice pre-shade, we're already getting lots of different variations of the colour. To push the shadows a little further, I've taken Vallejo Game Air Hex Lichen, thinned it 50-50, and I'm just going to put this into the areas of shadow. This is so that the areas of shadow aren't just black or a desaturated purple. This is to give them a bit more colour, a bit more richness. And you can see we're already now getting yet more tones onto the model with just two paints. I actually think it looks pretty nice at this stage, and you may want to leave it at this. This might be the purple that you're after. But I wanted to push it a little bit further, and particularly draw attention to the sort of face area. So I've taken beaten purple again, but no ink in it this time, and I've added in Vallejo Game Air Squid Pink. And I would say the ratio on this is something like four drops of squid pink to one drop of the purple. I didn't want to use pure squid pink, but near enough. And I'm going to use this just like I did the white in the pre-shade, but slightly more accurately in a smaller area. And don't worry if as you're looking at this you're thinking, oh that's washing the colour out quite a lot. This isn't the final stage. Now I'm going to glaze the whole model with a coat of GW Drucci Violet. This is already a very thin paint, it's a wash, so I'm not going to thin it. 
I'm just giving it one, maybe two, very thin passes. Here you can see it before the Drucci Violet. And here it is with the Drucci Violet filter applied. We've now got this really nice purple that I think is pretty close to the original artwork. So I'll give the whole model a coat of polyurethane gloss through the airbrush in preparation for the next stages. I'm going to make up an oil wash now to do the pin washing with. On the tab I've said it's Winsor & Newton Artist's Oil Colour Lamp Black, but you see in the video I actually used Winton. When making washes in particular, I find that the Winton, which is a lower grade oil paint, doesn't hold together so well when you thin it down loads, and you can end up getting this sort of patchy, bitty finish. So if you're going to use it for pin washing, I'd suggest you use the highest grade oil that you can. I've also no idea just how much wash I thought I was going to need for this model, because I've made tons of it. And then using that black pin wash, I'm just going to go in, pick out all the panel lines. And we've got a video covering this on using oils, enamels and acrylics for this technique. And I've chosen black just because I wanted to bring in a little more stark contrast and really bring the definition out of the panels. I thought about maybe using the GW purple contrast paint for this, but I thought I'd just take it further with a black oil wash. I've also applied the decals as I've glossed the model. Once it was dry, and normally I would leave it overnight and then come back to the model, I've given it a satin varnish. And you can see this has brought together all the parts of the model and given them the same finish. Base coated all my details in in black. And for anywhere that I want to paint gold, I'm base coating that with scale 75 decayed metal. I've also noticed that I've painted the straps grey here. I completely forgot to film that step so I'm sorry, but it's our usual recipe a Vallejo model colour dark grey, followed by Vallejo model colour French Mirage Blue. Now the gold in the artworks, this sort of nice rose gold colour. So rather than being too yellow, I picked GW Rune Lord Brass as the first highlight. You can see I'm just focusing on the areas that would reflect the light. So I'm leaving a lot of that decayed metal still on show. And then a final highlight of scale 75, Moonstone Alchemy. It's this really nice sort of pinky, rose, peach type metal colour. There's not a lot of gold on this model, but I really, really like the colour we've achieved here. The eye lenses on this sculpt, if I'm being honest, aren't the nicest in my opinion. So I can't paint them how I would normal lenses, but I'm base coating them in GW Lupercal Green. And then highlighting them with GW Moot Green. And if these were normal lenses, I'd use these colours as well, and I'd put that little white dot to reflect in the corner. Any areas of the model that I'm going to paint metal, or silver colour and base coating in Metal Colour Series Dark Aluminium. The model's looking pretty nice at this stage, but one of the big things with Horace Heresy painting, or certainly traditionally in Horace Heresy, has been weathering. So I want to chip him and battle damage him up a little bit. I'm going to use a nice dark grey colour to start with, so I'm sponging on some GW Skaven Blight Dinge. But just get a black and a grey or whatever and mix it up, it really isn't important. Focusing on those areas where I think damage will occur. And now I'm going to get some lead belcher, just on my brush. And in a few of the areas I've created chips with using the grey, I'm going to go over it with the silver. Talk about this sort of chipping in the recent Necromunda base video. And see how just a few chips really do stand out. I'm also going to highlight the bolter with this as well. I 
And then lastly, to dirty it up a bit, I'm going to take some of my sanded or thinner, add in artist oil colour burnt umber, and make up quite a thin brown wash. I'm going to pin wash this in to all those areas I think the dirt would accumulate. But I'll also use a thicker version of the mixture to create some streaks as well. And if that type of weathering or battle damage interests you, we've got a video dedicated just to streaking, and it's something we cover a lot of in our Patreon articles. Here he is once that oil's dry and the base is finished. You notice we didn't do any additional varnishing under that oil. We don't need to, as long as the acrylic paint that we put on before was dry, you're not gonna have any issues. And when I'm working on an army with Marines like this, I'll normally work on a batch of about 10 at a time. I try where possible to airbrush most of the army in one go, and then I'll break it down to squads. I hope you've enjoyed this second video in our Heresy series. 30K is a real personal passion of mine, I'm going to be releasing all the other legions over the coming weeks for you to enjoy. So as usual, if you've liked the video, hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more from us, hit subscribe. And I'll see you next time.